All right, folks, we are here today to do a head-to-head -head analysis of the Sitka Kelvin Aerolite jacket against the Stone Glacier Grumman Puffy. Now, this is the culmination of a four-part series. If you're interested in watching the first three parts, check the link in the description below. We looked at pants, base layer, and a mid-layer active insulation piece. Now, if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can win not only one of these pieces, but an entire four-piece kit from either Stone Glacier or Sitka, consisting of a pair of pants, a base layer, active insulation mid-layer, and static insulation outer layer. As with all of our other reviews, we're gonna compare these two pieces across 12 categories like price, material, fit, weight, and many more. Now, of all the videos in this series, this may be the most controversial one. And that is because while these are both outer layer pieces of static insulation, they solve that problem in a very different way. So before I dive into that, let me tell you what I mean by an outer layer piece of static insulation. The way I choose to look at layering, and this is similar to the way a lot of other people in the industry look at it, is that you basically have two layers of insulation. You have active insulation and static insulation. Active insulation would be something that you can wear while engaged in activity. We looked at the ambient hoodie, and the Circlite jacket. I've hiked with both of these on, it needs to be moderately cold in order to do that, but they breathe well enough that you can hike, you can not get too sweaty. So we look at these pieces as active or dynamic insulation to be used when we're being active or being dynamic. Now these pieces are much heavier. We tend to wear these when we're static or still. So for example, you get to a glassing knob, you sit down, you break out your pad, you would put one of these on to wear while glassing. You get back to camp at night, you're gonna be hanging out, you would put one of these on. Now in extremely cold environments, for example, I've done a lot of winter goat hunting, these pieces can act as active insulation, but for the majority of people, this is gonna be a piece that you wear while you're not moving. Also, in most situations, this is gonna be your outermost layer. Now, an exception to that would be um, any type of rain or precipitation. Neither of these is gonna stand up to significant rain. They have light DWR coatings, but they're gonna wet out pretty quickly. So, you would at that point wear some type of waterproof outer shell, whether that be a rain jacket, a soft shell, something of the sort. Now, while these products are not identical, I think there's still value and arguably more value in comparing them. I want you to think of a comparative review as a tool. Human beings think relatively. When I tell you something is heavy, you say, well, compared to what? And then I have to give you another object or I have to give you some form of absolute measurement so that your brain can go, oh, okay, I understand this one version of heavy, so this other version of heavy relates to it in this way. It's either heavier or lighter or similar. And so when I review just one product, it's very difficult for me to tell you how it performs without relating it to another product that you might have experience with. So that being said, I actually find it very valuable to use products that are somewhat dissimilar or provide different solutions to the same problem. Because if I look at two nearly identical down jackets, there's really not a lot of value I can offer. Like the, the industry has come so far at this point when we're talking about premium apparel, it's a lot of opinion. So looking at one piece, which is synthetic compared to another all natural down piece, down really has its benefits and deficits and synthetic layers really have their benefits and deficits. So you can take the information that I share in this video and it might make you help up, it might help you make an even more important decision than which puffy jacket. You should be asking yourself, well, do I need a synthetic or a down puffy? And then once you've answered that question, then you can go compare a couple of down puffies or go compare a couple of synthetic puffies. Another thing that I want to talk about is that up until this point, I've had significantly more experience with the Sitka layers than I have with the Stone Glacier layers. In this particular review, that is not the case. I bought the Groom and Puffy years ago, and I've used it a lot. And in addition to that, I have taken both these puffies on an identical hunt. I mean, like, literally identical. Same place, same dates, same weather. 
It was a winter goat hunt in uh, the northwest of British Columbia. Uh, very wet, very cold, tons of snow. I did. Uh, I took the Grumman in in 2021, and I took the Sitka in in 2023. So I have like apples to apples comparisons about how they did in the exact same environment under the exact same conditions. Before we dig into the review, one quick plug for mindful reviews. If you like what I do, these unbiased, unsponsored reviews, and you like my hunt films, and you wanna support that, and you wanna see more of that, the best way to do that is to go join Mindful Reviews. Mindful-reviews.com. It's an online community that I have built from the ground up, currently 277 members strong. Members get to participate in reviews, recommend reviews that they wanna see. They can enter raffles for the gear that I post up. They can, uh, month, uh, lifetime members are eligible to win monthly prizes. And there's a really active forum with a lot of really great community members who are always looking to help out each other. So it would be great to see you over there. If you wanna join, fantastic. If not, and you just want the free content, that's great too. If I can help, I'm here to help regardless of whether or not you're a member. But mindful-reviews.com, I think we're building something really cool. And little sneak peek, I will go over how you can win one of these pieces at the end of this video. So stick around until the end. All right, I'm gonna move these down because they're very puffy and they're kinda in my way for right now. Now, let's dig into the review. So first up, we have price. The Grumman clocks in at 349 US and the Sitka is 329. So really a difference of only $20. And the fact that we're talking about pieces that are approximately 350 bucks anyways, while the Sitka gets a point for being slightly cheaper, I don't think price should play into your decision-making process here. Weight. Now it's no surprise that the synthetic is heavier than the Puffy. So the Grumman weighs 14.3 ounces, couple ounces less than a pound, and the Sitka weighs 19 ounces, so three ounces more than a pound. So five ounces separating these two pieces. So with that being said, if weight is your ultimate priority, the down is definitely gonna take the edge, as it does with all down product. And that's really the thrust of the conversation we're gonna have here today. Like if you're looking for the lightest, warmest puffy, it's always gonna be down. However, in certain environments, down becomes next to useless. So if you've brought the lightest, warmest piece of gear, but you failed to pay attention to the environment that you were taking it into, and it now becomes useless, you haven't really saved yourself any weight at all. But yes, 100% Grumman is lighter than the Aerolite. Also, I'm running double XL in both of these pieces. Okay, let's talk materials. So the Grumman has a 15 denier Pertex shell, 850 plus power goose down fill. Uh, it is hyper dry treated down. So. With a hydrophobic down, what they're trying to do is apply a coating to the down so that the down doesn't fully compress and lose all of its loft when wet. Quick little physics lesson here. Down works because it creates a lot of air pockets that trap air and therefore create insulation. As soon as you get down wet, it collapses and it no longer traps that air. So. The reason synthetic is superior to down and wet environments is that as wet as synthetic gets, it never loses all of its loft. So this hyper dry coating, which is a hydrophobic coating, um, it, it is basically assisting in keeping that down lofted while still wet. Now it's 100% traceable RDS certified down and there's 5.3 ounces of insulation in the jacket in total. Now the Sitka uses Primaloft gold insulation. The other thing to note here is it is infused with a silica gel called Aerogel. That's why the jacket's called the Kelvin Aerolite. So again, the, this Aerogel is essentially almost near weightless fibers that create a lattice work of structure with the Primaloft gold that increases loft, increases breathability and increases warmth. 
If I was gonna do this review five years ago, there would not have been a synthetic puffy on the market that could have held a candle to a decent down puffy. But I really believe that the advancements in this next generation synthetic insulation we see coming, like just go look at that ambient review that I did last week. Like that Evolve active insulation that's in that ambient piece is next level. And I really think the strides that synthetic insulation has made in the last five years finally has us um, genuinely or authentically comparing synthetic pieces against down pieces. In addition to that, there's a 20D polyester face on the Sitka Kelvin Aerolite. Both jackets have a DWR finish. So I have given these uh, jackets a tie in regards to materials because I really do believe I can't say synthetic is superior to down or down is superior to synthetic. I can only say that under this set of circumstances, down performs better and under this set of circumstances, synthetics perform better. I will say that in both the cases of these particular products, they have used premium down and premium synthetic insulation. So the only way that one would lose is if like one had cheap synthetic or a crappy down, and that's not the case. These are grade A materials in both jackets, even though they are fundamentally different. Warmth is easy. The fact of the matter is the Grumman is notably warmer than the Kelvin Aerolite. If I was gonna put a number on it, I would probably say 20%. Like it's noticeable. Now, the difference is I would say in the past it was closer to 40 or 50%. I had some early synthetic puffies that were garbage. Unless you got a huge synthetic jacket, like any of those kind of old school ultralight synthetic puffies were garbage. This is the first one I've used that is legitimately warm. Like it's very close to the down, but the down is notably superior when it comes to warmth. Now, as you can expect, when it comes to breathability, the Sitka is superior. And let me explain what I mean by that because some would argue that down is just as breathable as synthetic. And I will say that under typical circumstances, the passage of air between these two garments is fairly similar. However, when I am talking about uh, breathability in a functional sense, I'm talking about moisture management and heat retention. And if that's the case, I've even had the grooming get kind of damped out from me being incredibly sweaty. And so while air can pass through there, as soon as you introduce an, a, a significant amount of water vapor, the breathability goes to crap or the impact of that water vapor reduces the heat retention of the piece to such a degree that it really doesn't matter how breathable it is anymore. So if we are going to say how breathable is it with respect to how uh, efficiently it allows moisture to evacuate while still retaining a similar degree of heat retention, the Kelvin comes out light years ahead. Now, let me give you an example. When I go on my winter goat hunt, I bring no stove, I never light a fire, and everybody is always like, well, how do you stay warm and dry? And the secret is nighttime, okay? I bring a synthetic uh, quilt and I get in that quilt with all my clothes and all my puffy layers on. Now, when I did that hunt two years ago and brought the Grumman jacket, it would, it would work, but it was somewhat limited in its ability to dry my upper layers because some of the moisture would get caught in that jacket. Now, as long as I had a synthetic quilt or sleeping bag on top of the down, it would, it would still work. But when I switched to the Kelvin Aerolite, that drying system was notably faster. Like it was significant. And not only that, when I was walking around and soaking wet from this precipitation or like the sleety kind of snow that you tend to get in this area of British Columbia, I would try and wear my, my groom and puffy to dry out and it would, it would work, you know, tolerably well. But as soon as like a significant amount of moisture kind of got trapped in that down, it really would reduce its drying properties. This never happens with the Kelvin Aerolite. 
So in that regard, the Kelvin Aerolite is far superior when it comes to breathability, moisture management, and heat retention when wet. Gonna give the edge to Sitka here in regards to durability. Now, as I mentioned before, there are compromises when you try to go ultra light. And the material used on the Grumman is a little bit fragile. It's that kind of stuff where if you get like a little fire ember on it, boom, instant hole. If you try to wear it while walking through the woods, I do not recommend it. It is a, uh, it's almost like a, it's not even like a sill nylon reminiscent material. Like it's weaker than that. It's, it's a pretty light surface material. I would consider this like a delicate piece. You have to respect it or you're going to pay the price. Whereas the face fabric on the Sitka is much more robust. I don't worry about it as much. I would gladly wear it while walking around in the woods. It doesn't have the same tendency to rip and tear. And you could definitely have three or four seconds to like brush off an ember um, if, it, if it just fell on it. Um, it wouldn't immediately sink into the garment like it does with the Grumman. So Sitka gets a slight edge on durability, recognizing that neither of these are like hardcore outer shell pieces. They're meant to be treated with respect. Now the next category was pretty interesting because up until now in the previous pieces I, we've reviewed, I would say Stone Glacier has taken an edge in the fit department. Sitka tends to be a little boxier, tends to be designed more for guys that are a little heavier around the middle with like smaller arms and smaller legs. Stone Glacier tends to have a more athletic fit in, in these pieces, that kind of flopped. Um, because of the soft shell fabric used for the Stone Glacier, it doesn't have much st structure. Like you put it on and you kind of feel like the Michelin Man. Like it's just, it's puffy and billowy and kind of sticks out all over the place. Now that's part of why it works so well because that surface area or the volume that the down has to fill, the greater that is, the greater the heat retention. So again, it's just a price you have to pay for the performance of the Grumman. Now with the Aerolite, it is a much more tailored fit. It has shooter sleeves, which are great if you have to layer under another jacket. And it also has a drawstring at the bottom, which really helps kind of tailor the fit to your individual needs. Also stops drafts from coming up. And I'm a little surprised that the Grumman doesn't have a drawstring. It has one for the hood. It would be an extra maybe half an ounce or something, I would think. So, um, it would really add some functionality, but definitely Sitka takes a slight edge in the fit department. One last note I will make around fitment is the hood. In this case, I prefer the Sitka hood pretty significantly over the Stone Glacier hood. It has a the Stone Glacier hood has a tendency to come down on top of my eyes, no matter how I have it set up. Like the tighter I make the draw cord, it just the worse it crunches it down on my face. It's not, some draw cords tend to pull the hood back from your face while tightening it. That's the mechanism I prefer because it kind of allows you to adjust to two dimensions at the same time. But the Stone Glacier has a tendency to kind of come down uh, in front of your eyes. Construction, we have a tie. Again, contrary to the trend, Stone Glacier up to this point has won the construction categories because it tends to have beefier seams, doubles up on flat locks, and just overall has a more robust construction to the actual garment. But because this is one of their true ultralight pieces, their construction techniques are just as minimal as the construction techniques on the Aerolite. So single thread seams, uh, single flat locks, um, yeah, just a more minimalist approach. But again, both these garments are fighting the weight battle, so it's to be expected. So with that knowledge, they get a tie at one point apiece. Now feature set, there's not really a whole lot to talk about here. These are very bare bones products. They both have two pockets. They both have hoods with drawstrings. The only thing that really sets them apart is the lack of a drawstring on the Grumman. So I'm gonna give the point to Sitka for this particular category. For options, we continue on with the trend that we've been seeing in this series. The Stone Glacier, a more minimalist approach to SKUs. You can buy it in two solid colors and there are five sizes available in each color. On the other hand, Sitka offers four different camos, six different solid colors, and seven sizes within those colors available. Packability's gotta go to the groom in here. It's a down product and there is no synthetic product 
that when, you know, attempting to create the same heat retention would equal in packability. Down is just almost miraculous in how small you can pack it up. Now, that being said, it's not like these pieces are light years apart. Like, I have two Enlightened Enigma quilts. One is synthetic, one is down, and it is unreal, the difference in packability. Like, I can get my down sleeping bag almost into a shape like this, like it's smaller than a Nalgene. My synthetic is like a boulder in my backpack. Like there's just nothing I can do. These pieces, I would say it's probably closer to like a 10 to 15% difference. Like when you got them squished up as tight as they'll both go, the stone glacier is smaller, but maybe only by 10 or 15%. So again, I wouldn't let that be the sole piece of data that influences your decision. Odor resistance, we're gonna tie these guys again. I've worn both of these pieces extensively. I've never had an issue with either, primarily because you're normally wearing three layers before you actually get to the puffy. So very little of your sweat is making it out that far. And yeah, it's just, it's a non-issue as far as I'm concerned. Okay, before we get to the final results and my final thoughts, let's talk about how you can win some of this gear. So I am having a raffle for a four piece kit from either Stone Glacier or Sitka, or you can mix and match pieces, but you can pick any pants, base layer, mid layer, and outer layer that you want. If you know what you want and you win, fantastic. I'll order it, we're done. If you're not quite sure or you want some feedback, let's hop on a Zoom call. We'll talk about your body type, your level of experience, the type of terrain you hunt the most, and I'll do my best to give you some advice on what I think would be the best set of options for your particular style of hunting. Now, in order to enter that raffle, you have to be a member of Mindful Reviews. So if you're already a member, good to go, buy a ticket if you want. If you're not, go to mindful-reviews.com. Purchase a membership, you'll then have access to the community. There's a link within the community to go buy the tickets. You are good to go. This is the last review in this series. So I would say there's maybe like four to seven days left after this video until the tickets either sell out or I just close it and we draw a winner. So if you're interested, I would act now and go to buy a ticket. You're joining a great community at the same time. If you have any questions, just drop it down in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer those. So the final score, the Sitka ended up with 15 and the Stone Glacier ended up with 18. So by the numbers, Sitka wins. Now, with this category specifically, I also would not let that solely drive your purchase decision. This really boils down to the environment you're gonna be hunting in. So there's two ways to look at this. I tend to hunt in both types of environments, cold and arid and cold and wet. I've got lots of money, I'm gonna buy a down layer and I'm gonna buy a synthetic layer and I'll take each on the appropriate hunt. And if that's you, fantastic. For most people though, they don't have an infinite budget, so they're trying to get the best bang for their buck. So I would say to you, either you can look at this two ways. Where do I spend most of my time? Or what is the most critical hunt that I could go on? Let me give you an example. So if I ignore my goat hunt in February and look at my schedule, I have a lot of hunts later in the season that could all get pretty cold, but they tend to be a little bit drier in nature. Like I'm going to Colorado for second rifle mule deer, probably be significantly cold, but also be pretty dry. And if it snows, um, it'll likely be like a fairly dry snow and I'll likely have some type of shell outer layer on anyways. I'm also camping at the truck almost every night. So if something did get wet, I've got lots of opportunity to dry it out. After that, I have a, a whitetail hunt in Saskatchewan. It's gonna be cold as hell. But I'm either gonna be in a blind or I'm gonna be up in a stand where I'm gonna have some type of layer on top of my puffy jacket anyways. And then I have a uh, archery mule deer hunt in New Mexico where the nights could get very chilly, but highly likely to be a very dry hunt. Okay, if those are the hunts that I have on the calendar and I'm thinking I need a puffy layer, I'm probably gonna go down. It's lighter, it's warmer. Overall, it's a superior product for what I need out of it. Now, once you throw in my late season goat hunt, that kinda all changes. 
Last year, it was minus 25 Celsius for eight straight days. Insanely cold. And also very wet. And that is the type of environment where products can be mission critical. Like a matter of getting wet or not getting wet. And I also don't have access to fire, don't have access to power. When something gets wet in there, it's wet. You're done. So I have moved to a completely synthetic setup for that particular hunt. Because for me, it's a risk versus reward. Yes, it's going to be a little bit heavier. Yes, it's not going to be quite as warm. So I'm going to need a different outer layer or I'm just going to need to have to keep that in mind. But no matter how wet I get, I'm not going to die because the synthetic is going to keep me warm. So take a look at your calendar. Have a think about what suits your needs best. Um, and that's going to answer your down versus synthetic question. And then as I mentioned previously, I, I really do believe that these are the best two pieces in their respective categories. I think Kuyu has some really nice down options. I don't have a lot of experience in them, but I have friends who do, and just looking at their specs, I think they're probably worth taking a look at as well. I haven't seen a whole lot of other compelling options on the market that would be legitimate competition for these two products. So there you have it. The final review in our four-part Sitka versus Stone Glacier series. I hope this was helpful. If there's other multi-part series you wanna see, drop a request down in the comments below. If you agree, disagree, want to add something, I would love to hear about it uh, and continue that conversation in the comments section. Now, YouTube does not do a great job of organically boosting hunting content. So if you could take a moment and help me out, like, comment, share, subscribe, anything would, would help and I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, until next time, thank you for tuning in.